Good morning everybody and once again welcome to the video. A few months back I made a video on essentially how we moved 8.5 million records from MongoDB collection to AWS S3 data lake in a whopping less than 60 minutes. Uh, a lot of people commented, a lot of people liked the video and said, hey, would you be able to provide some insight? So I said, why just insight? Why not an entire lab on that, right? So hence I have decided to make an amazing lab for you guys where I'll be walking you over the code and showing you a complete demo, all right? Let's get started, guys. Um, so this was the video that I posted. Uh, Mr. Straker says, hey, Sawmill, is it possible to elaborate more on AWS Lambda function in your architecture? Do you have any other videos uh, which do a deeper discussion in that, right? And a lot of other people also commented, which is why I decided to make a lab. Disclaimer, uh, in order to uh, use my script or my code, if you, whatever MongoDB collection you have, there has to be a field or there has to be a field in that document called the created date. And it has to be a daytime object. And there's a reason uh, why it has to be a daytime object because we have implemented a process so that anytime it fails, it would automatically start from where it left. Uh, so I'll show you all of that in the code section shortly. So what is the concept overall here is uh, the producer, right? It's going to run a job, which is going to read data from Mongo and it's going to batch the data and it's going to send batches of data to the SQS messages. Now you have to make sure that the, you do not put so many messages because the maximum payload size in SQS is 256 KB. So we chose this number to be about 10 or 20, which means in an array, we are essentially put 20 items and we essentially send it to the SQS. Now Lambda is gonna take batches, right? It's gonna take batches of data, right? So it's gonna say, hypothetically, again, if the batch size is 10, right? If the Lambda batch size is 10 and each item in the document essentially has 10 items, which means a single Lambda is gonna process 100 items. So now we can fire up a thousand lambdas concurrently and essentially scale our workers, right? So let me show you all that in action. You'll, you'll really appreciate um, all these things in action, okay? So the first thing that I wanna show you, this is lab number 27, all the code is given. So uh, here I'm defining my, um, uh, you know, settings for my lambda functions here. So here I'm saying reserved concurrency as 900 which means I'm saying at a given point, I want a maximum fire 900 concurrent Lambda, maximum. Uh, here is the timeout is 200 seconds, right? Here are the environment variable where I want to essentially dump my data, right? Uh, here is the event. So this Lambda is going to be invoked by an SQS queue, right? Here I'm creating my SQS queue. And here I want to talk a little bit here on the settings. The visibility timeout is has to be always twice the time of the Lambda. So if the Lambda is 200, this should be around 400 or more than that twice. This is a good rule of thumb. Retention period, that is the maximum retention period of the messages should be 14 days. Uh, this is the size that is 256 kilobytes. Um, then essentially I'm configuring the dead letter queue and essentially I'm doing a short polling here. This is really important. This number can really help you to achieve a great throughput. It is a number between one to 20. Uh, if you choose a smaller number, which means it's gonna uh, get lesser messages and it's gonna fire up pretty quickly. If you essentially do a long polling, which means there will be Lambda can get more messages, it can squeeze more messages, right? So this number is very uh, crucial, okay? Now, what I wanna show you is again, I have deployed the entire stack, right? Now I wanna show you the MongoDB code, right? This is where all the magic happens. I have on a high level three classes, MongoDB settings, whereas it's a constructor where I defined all the attributes. Then I have a MongoDB class in which uh, we essentially inject a way, uh, we inject the uh, instance of a class, right? So the way we access the MongoDB class is through a connector. Uh, so this is a design pattern that I have, uh, you know, opted in my company as well. So connector, you can create several connectors, QA connector, UAT connector, dev prod connector, ABC, right? So the way um, if you observe is, um, again, I'll show you how I'm accessing the connector object. Again, S3 class and SQS class on a high level. This is a master class. I'm inheriting S3 and SQS in my constructor. As you can see, these are the environment variables, uh, right? Now, another thing that is important is uh, we call the run function, right? The run function will call this method over here. Now, what does this do? This is important for you to understand here. This is very important, okay? So when the process starts, it's gonna essentially check if there is a metadata on S3. So if it is, if there's a no metadata on S3, it's gonna essentially upload a file, 
again upload a file with a particular date so this tells the job from where to start so basically i'm saying i want to move everything from the year 2021 to 2022 everything into s3 from mongodb so what this will do is initially if we, if the file does not exit it's going to insert this file on aws s3 right now what happens is essentially it's going to parse the, uh, the the dates right and then and then the job starts so it's going to check if the first created date is less than the max created date if it is true it comes inside and there's a there's a method called put sqs messages so what this does is basically for a given day so for example let's say today right 9 3 2022 which is where i'm recording the video so for 24 hours right so for hours uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 all the way to 24 hours it's gonna essentially create a query if you observe uh, so if you see it's gonna create a query and for every hour it's gonna grab the data from mongo now again as if you observe the way we access the mongo is through a connector object so on the constructor level if you observe and again i don't want to go too too much into code i want to show you a demo i we essentially as you can see connector.mongodb.value so this one right here is an enum i'm accessing the instance uh, on an enum right so i'm doing this here now which means i can access all the methods in my base class right so if I go back to my SQS class, which was here. So as you can see for each 24 hours, for every hour in that particular day, I'm gonna query my Mongo, get the data. So if the count is greater than zero, right? If that means the Mongo has data. Now we have also essentially implemented a generator object when we are querying Mongo. We So as you can see, let's say the Mongo has, let's say a thousand items, right? And let's say our batch size is 10. So thousand divided by 10, that's gonna be our number of pages, right? And what we do is we essentially use the word yield so that we can iterate over the items much more efficiently. Again, you want to use a generator object, right? So now coming back to that function that I was talking about, that is over here. So yeah, if the count is greater than zero, we essentially say flag is true. We process, we enter into a while loop. We say, okay, you know, next, which means we iterate over the yield object that is a generator object. We essentially batch the data here. As you can see, we create an array of objects, right? So this is one here that I showed you, right? So we essentially do that and then we essentially dump the item into an, um, into an SQS message. So we essentially upload these batch of messages to the SQS and once that particular, again, hour is complete, the generator will issue a, uh, a stop iteration, which means it's gonna break the while loop and it's gonna go for the next hour, hour two, hour three, hour four, and so on for all the days. So the producers are gonna read the data, gonna batch it, and then simply dump into the Amazon SQS where the lambdas are gonna pick up. Now, let me show you the lambda code in a second. Very interesting here, things are happening here. What you observe here is, we essentially deserialize the messages. So again, if you observe, this is how the messages are, get, are getting into Lambda, right? So we are saying uh, for record in records, we are essentially getting the body. And then for all the items in that messages, remember it's an array of objects, right? So we essentially iterate over that and we pass it over to a class called historical data dump. So now here where uh, essentially all the transformation happens. So if you observe what we do in this class, uh, again, I wanna go over a high level. Mongo to ST, again, you can read the code, but what happens here is for each item in the message, right? So for each single JSON document, what we do is essentially we flatten out the data. So let's say you have a complex structure. This will essentially flatten everything out, convert all the values into a string uh, to make sure that the leg doesn't break so that I can run my glue crawler and essentially query this data using Athena, right? So for that, so as you can see, for each item in the messages, we call the uh, class called flatten dict, right? So we flatten out the data, and then what we do is essentially we clean the data. So there's a class called clean. Uh, 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 let me show you quickly. Uh, me... So here, as you can see, dict clean, right? So basically, if there is any num, null, any any stuff, it's gonna clean the dictionary and it's gonna replace those values with a standard. Uh, items as you can see here so all the data cleaning and flattening out happens on the lambda and then essentially we essentially put the data on the data lake as you can see here so if you come on the final part uh, i just want to show you really really quick 
want to show you the put files object here. So here is the path, right? Database, MongoDB, table name, year, month, day format, and so on. Okay, enough of talking now. Let me show you this demo, everything in action, right? So again, I do not have a metadata here, as you can see. I have my SQS and a dead letter queue, and this is my Lambda that's gonna process the data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my script here, runner script.py. I'll start this job. Now, if you observe, initially the data is not there, so it's gonna create a metadata. So if, if you observe here, it created a metadata here, right? Uh, so now anytime the job will stop, it knows from where to start next time. It will resume from that point. And as you can see, at a very rapid rate, it's essentially dumping batches of messages on the SQS. At this point, my lambdas are gonna pick up and again, it's gonna fire, I can maximum fire up to 900 lambdas. I wanna stop, otherwise I'll get charged because I'm doing this exercise on my personal account, right? So at a point it will, uh, as you can see, right? These are the messages that are coming in, right? So now if you observe, as you can see, database, table name, year, month. So observe, ob observe this carefully. So we are moving everything from 2021. And again, it essentially is moving into this appropriate folder into the lake. Again, as you can see, this, that's the data, right? So even in like matter of couple of seconds, right? If you observe how much data uh, we moved, uh, let me do calculate total size. We moved about 31 objects times the batch size, okay? So in a matter of couple of seconds, I was able to move all these data from MongoDB to S3, right? So what you guys are learning here is essentially how we are breaking down, um, how we are breaking down the job into two parts, producer and consumer. The job of producer is gonna read the data, batch the data and send. And now we are fanning out essentially on the consumer side. Consumers are essentially consuming from the SQS. They're flattening out the data. They are cleaning the data and then they are dumping it into the data lake, right? Where you can now query this data using standard SQL Athena, right? So at a given point, you can fire a thousand, two thousand, three thousand lambdas, uh, you know, easily, right? So using this technique, we were able to move 8.5 million records from MongoDB into, a, uh, into S3 uh, using simple SQS and Lambda functions. Um, again, uh, it's very important to play with these numbers for batches, right? So as I as I was talking in the video, right, I essentially use the batch size as 10, which means the message in a single array, there are 10 messages. And in the Lambda, we again use the number 10, which means uh, 10 times 10, which is 100 items, each Lambda is processing 100 items, right? You can play with this number, you can play with the batch sizes and essentially obtain or uh, achieve a best throughput, right? To, you know, uh, ingest data rapidly, right? I'll leave all the links in the description. Again, all the material, again, all the code and every single thing is available under lab number 27, including the SQSQ, the Lambda functions, every single thing step by step is there. So I encourage you guys to go and see the code, what's written, what's not, and if needed, change things for your, uh, basically for your own use, right? With that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed these insights. I did show you a demo. I did give you an overview on the code part itself. Uh, this is how you can move data uh, with a pretty, at a pretty fast rate using SQS and Lambda. And remember, it's a very robust solution because Anytime a job, a Lambda fails, it will simply move the item to the dead letter. Now I can use a DLQ read drive to point the uh, failed messages into back to the source queue and reprocess them. It's amazing, right? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And with that being said, if you have any more questions, list your question in the comments. And I strongly encourage you to see the code, try to, you know, uh, try to essentially implement or try to run this if you, are, if you have a use case to move data from Mongo to S3. Thank you so much. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next upcoming videos.